This is another one of my favorite places in Lafayette. I know it's a little bit weird, desolate, but this used to be a Marsh grocery store. When Jen and I moved to town, uh, there was a Marsh here and there was one over by Sam's Club. And I'd never heard of a Marsh before. I, I didn't know that they existed. I didn't know what they were, but apparently they were grocery stores. And the funny thing is, when we got to town, people told me that Marsh had the best fried chicken and the best donuts in town. Now, I'm not saying everybody told me that. I'm saying like a few people that I really trusted said they had the best fried chicken and best donuts. Now, fried chicken, I understand. I mean, there's a fried chicken for everyone and there's a person for every fried chicken. I know that. There's gonna be a favorite fried chicken for every single person. I'm a little partial to Walmart. You know, there's just something about the over crispy, overcooked chicken that I kind of like. I don't know what it is, but nonetheless, I can get why someone might say that Marsh had the best fried chicken. But the donuts, that didn't make sense to me. When we moved to town, uh, Krispy Kreme was still in business. And so I thought Krispy Kreme was great. And near our house is a place called Corlew Donut Company. I think they're pretty great. And if you ask anyone who's lived in Lafayette for much time at all, they'll tell you, no, it's got to be Mary Lou Donuts. Mary Lou Donuts is the clear favorite from the majority of people around here. And so I said that to the guy. I was like, what do you mean? Mary Lou's supposed to be the best. And then he let me know the secret. Apparently, back when Marsh decided to make donuts, they hired the guy from Mary Lou. They apparently got the cook or one of the cooks from Mary Lou to come over here and he trained all the people here how to make donuts and apparently they were the best donuts in town from this guy's perspective for a while, even better than Mary Lou for a period of time. I never got to try him because Marsh went out of business. And then a couple years later, uh, this Needler's place showed up and they were crazy hyping it on Facebook and other places. I had all kinds of friends who were so excited about Needler's showing up. I was confused. I thought Needler's might be a craft store or a store for yarn or fabrics or something like that. But turns out it was a grocery store. And so they set up camp in here and started selling stuff. And, and I thought it was kind of cool because, you know, on the one hand, Marsh had fried chicken and donuts. Needler's had a really interesting brand and a really interesting logo that I kind of wanted to shop at a grocery store that sounded like a craft store. I, I don't know what it was all about. And so I'm strangely drawn to this place. I feel drawn here because of the stories of the fried chicken and the donuts and the somewhat cool and weird branding of Needlers. But here's the thing. If I show up here looking for something, I'm going to get nothing because nothing is here anymore. There might be stories of fried chicken. There might be stories of donuts. There might be stories of cool branding, but show up here and there's nothing. It's empty, it's hollow, there's nothing for me. But this place, on the other hand, has everything. So I don't know if anyone around here is gonna hear me say this, but um, I always kind of thought that Rural King was sort of like the redneck version of Menards. You know, they, they've got everything. You can find groceries in there, you can find stuff for your dog, you can find just about anything in there. And so it's one of those places to have what you need, but maybe not the flashy thing. Nothing in Rural King is cool. They don't have a cool logo, they don't have a cool sign, they don't have a cool building. You go inside, nothing is cool. They give you free popcorn, but it's not great popcorn. There's nothing about Rural King that you can say is like cool, but they probably have what you need. And that's why I think Rural King and Marsh, at least what's left of it, are kind of good illustrations for our lesson today. Jesus, when he taught us to pray, the phrase he said was, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Those are two things that Jesus asks us to pray that aren't cool. They're definitely what we need. We need sustenance on a daily basis, and we need to recognize that God is our ultimate source of everything that we need. We know that we need forgiveness, 
And we have to go to God and say, God, we need you to forgive us. There's no other way we can forgive other people unless we know your forgiveness. And there's no other way we can possibly forgive other people unless you give us the strength to forgive them. We need God. These are two things that describe how much we desperately need God. But they're just not cool. They're not flashy. They're not the donuts or fried chicken, you know? And yet Jesus is telling us that we need to ask God for our daily bread and for our forgiveness. See, here's the thing. Every time we search for the thing that's cool and amazing, I don't know if it's every time, but at least a lot of times, we come out feeling empty, broken. Like the thing that we thought we wanted ends up being the thing that we didn't want. But every time we pursue what we need, we just might get surprised. I remember when I went into Rural King, one of the first times I ever went in there, I found my favorite brand of popcorn. Not the free popcorn they give you, the popcorn you buy. It's in these little bags from Wabash Valley Farms. It's amazing, I love it. It's so much better than normal popcorn. And so this is the only place I buy popcorn from anymore. But you don't find the flashy thing in a place like this. You just might find what you need. And here's the truth about God. God loves you. He knows what you need. And if God lets something come into your life, that's because he knows you need it. And if God keeps something out of your life, that's because he knows it will leave you empty. And so thank God for the things that he brings to you. And thank God for the things that he leaves out. And come to God today and say, God, Give me my daily bread. Give me exactly what I need for this day. God, forgive me. Give me exactly the thing my spirit needs for today, cleansing and healing. And then from that point, I can be a person who gives to others. From that point, I can be a person who can offer to others. When you look for what you need, you just might get surprised. When you look for the cool and fancy thing, you just might find yourself empty. God loves you enough to give you what you need and to keep the other things away.